So this is a description of a rhino and grasshopper file combination which describes this kite turbine you can see here and what it's doing is looking at the sort of ground use area and the overlap between the turbines here. Now this mess of spaghetti on the right hand side here is the is the parameter set which describes what's going on in this window and use all, all these parts here to to really change and adjust what happens here. It, uh, it looks a bit confusing to start with but uh, one thing we can do is you know, select areas, select parts of it and um, disable it or, or turn it off and then choose individual parts of that again to yeah, maybe turn it back on so it makes it simpler to, to see what's happening. Um, we can go through this document, all the, all the parts here, I'll show you what the modules are and we'll we'll break it down part by part, show you how it builds up to do the the evaluation. So generally with grasshopper documents the workflow goes from left hand side over through a bit of processing to right hand side outputs here, analysis stuff here generally. Um, so the first part here really is looking at developing the ring system. Uh, we've got the, the main turbine parts here, uh, the the lifting line and where the, the top and bottom of it is here. This is a fairly simple representation. I have a, a bunch of other ones but uh, this, this one makes it fairly fast to make a fairly good looking turbine. This one's the bottom part, the transmission from say here down to the ground station and yeah we'll have a look at, at these parts first. So if I select this one and control C that we will get a, a new document and in this document if we paste we've got that detail there now I think we need to this is still turned off you see when they're, they're greyed out like this uh, oh that, that seems to be missing a connection there as well I guess that's down to here um, you can right click on these and the preview is taken back. Now all we're seeing there at the moment is a set of rings floating above. Now I've got the, the ground station and the, the lifter actually in this Rhino document. Those those parts are there already. Um, let's have a look in the grasshopper file. It says we have something called a main center line. What's the main center line? In this case we can turn it on to find out. We'll turn on the preview. Okay it's the main line in the middle tends to be that in my um, models these days, in the actual turbines, I, I don't really run one of those, so I've, I've turned that off here in the preview. However, it's quite handy um, to keep that model here. Um, there's a, a part in Grasshopper where you can turn on a gumball to, to pull these about, and I should be able to find that, but I can't at the moment. So I've got this uh, gumball feature enabled in Grasshopper and by doing that I can go into the document, the Rhino document and if we look at it from say the side view or the right view I can pull that set of rings about, I can you know, move it up or down and, and that completely realigns the turbine, um, in this case those would be fairly long, wonky looking directions. Um, change where we've got that, back to where it was, uh, up it down. Yeah, okay, we're somewhere about there. So this line at the top here, at the top of the grasshopper document, that really sort of is the basis for what I've built this turbine around. And the really simple way I've done it is describe a curve that goes around it. It's about how we look at how that curve was developed. So what we have to do is describe, you know, okay there's a fair few things going on up here, there's the number of rings so we can you know, change that, it was three that I had there, uh, let's stick to three and you can see as I, I change the, the number of the parameter or the number of rings here what we're doing is setting a range, a domain and that domain feeds this graph mapper component and the graph mapper here is um, divided into a number of steps 
and these equal steps define what the curve of these rings is. So if I tweak these uh, lines, we can see it's it's fatter underneath there if I do it that way, or it's um, you know more bulged. And it's quite fun to play about and think, oh, okay, I want to you know today I want a turbine a wee bit like that. Um, I'll just undo my changes there. You've also now got the the spread of the rings, so we can concentrate them more at the top or more at the bottom. And this really is the along that line, along that domain, where do we want the that to happen? So what we're looking at is on that curve, we feed that curve these um, domain points, these values of the domain point. And if I show you, we break, uh, we put frames on that curve. Uh, you can see those frames there, they're very small sort of, um, working a bit like planes, like a, like a plane uh, perpendicular to the line. Um, most of a very big lines in comparison to them at the moment, but yeah, they're arrayed along that uh, line there, and you can see as I, I change the parameter of the spread, the, that T factor, the, the, the domain point on that curve is is adjusted where that where that plane perpendicular to the curve this is the perp frame component where that sits on the on the line that we defined originally so we've got those frames we want to put some circles um, on those uh, and looking at the way I've actually configured this one this probably isn't my most efficient way of doing it what I've done here is uh, used these thicknesses these these ring diameters to describe uh, a pipe and its variable thicknesses up and down uh, this line. I'm pretty sure I could have just used that as the input to some radiuses and put those radiuses on a circle um, on these frames. That's probably the better way than, that's probably a faster way than bisecting the, this um, shape with these planes to get that uh, circle afterwards. Okay, so yeah, we can do this better, but um, we ended up getting these circles, and um, they're just curves in this case. And what we've got here is we're changing the order of them. So we're, we're uh, we, we shuffle it on one. This is the list item, or we pick a list item number. Sorry, what this is doing is aligning, making sure that all of these circles are described in the same sort of way. This component flip curve makes sure that um, each of the curves in, in the plane that they are aligns to this curve that we've chosen. It just so happens to be in, in this list. Let's get a panel up. Uh, panel is very handy. If you want to see the output of, of really anything, it you know, tells you what's coming out. Oh, here we have a list. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, it's not a flattened list. You know, we could flatten that and it's more simple. Um, but each one of these has its own uh, level, basically data level to it. Um, it's all part of the, the data handling in Grasshopper. Uh, we're making sure each one of those works with the, the first one with this flip curve so they're, they're all aligned and that, that gives us uh, a nice regular set of curves uh, a regular set of geometry coming out of here. Now having a look what's this extra piece down here it says the spread of the rings up the stack oh we've played with that one we've got the ring diameters up the stack twist up the stack okay we're um, we can't see really what that is at the moment. Ah, okay, that feeds into this rotate axis component. So we've got these nice curves all aligned, and so their their seam point will be at the, the same place. So all the seams will be along the top. And when we get to this rotate axis, we have got this set of um, lines coming in here, but we don't really know what this does yet. Okay, so for some reason, we're turning these circles around. Let's go back to the original document and we'll see that the, the next component along, ah, you look, I cheated there, I've been here already. Uh, I'm gonna control C this one. And if we go back into our unnamed document, control V that there, 
I'm going to read a bit above. And I think it was connected with these. And the number, I think, it was this one. This is the number of kites and ring, uh, number of kites and lines per ring parameter. So this is basically choosing you know, how much we're going to divide these circles into. This component that we took across is the divide curve. We're going to basically each one of these curves. Yeah, we're going to divide it into a number. And at the moment, it's chosen number ten. Uh, we're going to say five because that's how many I want on my kite eventually. You see, each one of these circles has five dots on it just now. And I'm going to turn off a few other of the, yeah, a few of these things so we can make it clear what we've got. We can do that. Yeah, each one of these, all these controls here are still working. We can still tweak that, tweak that. But now we've got this twist up the stack. We should be able to see. I'm going to go into the perspective zoom, zoom out a little bit. Perspective view. Um, if I tweak these parameters here, we should see. Oh, the top ones twist a bit more. Yeah, I can move the the very top one, and you can have a wee play there. And this really, again, this is not scientific. This is just a design um, to show. You know, if from experience we you know, were able to design this way, but uh, we can run some simulations in Grasshopper later to see how these things level out and that they do work out roughly as we're showing in this design version. Um, but here are the parameters describing what the kite turbine is going to look like in the end. So we have this extra gubbins here coming out of the, uh, the curve development this time and it's our graph mapper, that's called. And the reason for this is we're changing the the data structure. We're making sure that each one of these, if we look at what it is, we'll get our panel again, our friendly panel. And oh, make sure that connects. Yeah, so this data here coming out as it is, is uh, it's the zeroth level, it's yeah, and it's got zero item, um, yeah, well, zero to 10 items in there, so 11 items. Um, we're using a graft and a simplify structure here to say that we want this zero level, let me zoom in a wee bit, to 10. And uh, that's just as it was up here. I believe we had zero to 10. That's perfect. So for each one of those, we're describing a twist up the stack. We're going to change that just now to a plus one. So we're going actually number one to number 11 uh, because we don't want the bottom one to change. This one, I don't think that ever changes. Let me just double check that. Oh no, it does. I'm wrong. Ah, but we really tend not to want that to ever change. Uh, we want to keep it down there. So why would I have bothered with this? Hmm, not sure. There's probably no reason for it at all. The reason for this is we have an and yeah we have an angle multiplier basically just to match this and this is a, a fairly uh, fairly arbitrary really number there but um anyway, just, but we're working in degrees here uh, so we wanted you know a fairly hefty multiplier on that zero to one range uh, to get our degrees value of how much these would twist. Now, what we've got to do next is add in the lines up here. So let's have a wee look at what the next component was over here. Ooh, we had some anchors, that would be useful later. We had point nearest curve and we had a split tree. Oh, and we had some lines. Th this will be the one, the up lines is what I was looking for. And these up lines define the lines going up the turbine. So I'm gonna copy that just now. Go back to here and paste that. So let's have a look how this piece works. We've got some data to go in here, and this thing here is a, a tree splitting part. 
uh, we're going to flatten and take off zero. Ah, this is probably why I did that data structure earlier. Let's have a look. I think it went in here, didn't it? And oh, we needed that's the negative, positive. Does this go in first? No, let's have a look back at the back at this one. And what did we have? Oh, we had it coming out of there. That makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, and that one was concatenation for Ah, this number comes from the number of ladder rungs. Yes. Okay. I'll explain that in a wee second. This number is that one. And this now should show some lines going up. Oh, thank goodness that worked out. It's like I know what I'm talking about. <gasps> Phew. So. We now have a little structure that dances like that. That's quite cute. Um, good. And yeah, always worth a wee play with these just to make sure you know what you're up to and you know what you're looking at when you're over here because it seems a bit disassociated. Um, so the reasoning for this was, let me think it through. Yeah, the structure that we had coming out of here. Again, let's get our panel. This is going to always helps when you're looking at things. We had these five elements here. That's going to be the five elements on one ring. So that's set number zero, set number one. But here we're splitting the data. So if we get another panel again, um, but this time we'll feed the negative. Okay. Um, the data from set number one here. Oh, we've taken it, we've split the tree. So these are this has got rid of zero with this mask of zero, basically. Um, that's the mask that we've put in. You can change this mask, set multiple text there. That's the text I've done it, uh, put in. I, you know, if I changed that to two just now, it would all go wonky, would lose this bottom bit. Um, has that gone back? Yeah, I think so. So the text should be back at zero. Good. Um, now you can see that this one, 379, yeah, 209, 201, that matches this here. What these are, th these are point definitions. These are the points on this. I should have said that, sorry. These, these are the point definitions, the five points on that uh, first circle in this one, which is zero. We, we start at zero. Um, and so this list here of the sets of five points goes up to 10, whereas this list over here, sets of five points, it's only going to go up to 10, but it starts at, at one. So we've cut off, you know, we've got the last one, but we've cut off the first one because we have this line component. Uh, let's have a look at that. I'll turn these ones off. Yeah, that's it's still there. Okay. So what I've done is um, I've put 55 values of points from here into this line component. And this line draws from uh, your elements, your indices here, 0, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, up to this, uh, the, the next part in. In this case, it's 1, 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, uh, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. So those lines are drawn. Um, I know it's going to be from, one. yeah, yeah, that's the way it is. Let's have a look at what the output is. What the output says is we have lines, these lines drawn here, but you'll notice there's this last section line and it's zero centimeters. Okay, that's useless data. We're going to get rid of that. Um, so again, we've used a mask to filter that out. Um, split the tree and use this mask here, which is the 10th element. Uh, I've made yeah I've made a mask that as this concatenate uh, we've just created this data which is a text data and this text data makes a mask so we've got curly brackets number 10 close brackets that's our mask we uh, anything positive gets 
you know, that matches that mask gets up to the P side, the positive side. Anything negative that doesn't match that mask, we're going to keep that. And that's the lines out that we want. We've got rid of that last number uh, 10. So we've got 10 values uh, of line sets now, 0 to 9. And if we turn those on, it's a, a cleaner data structure. And that's going to help later on. So that's our first part. We have some rings. That's the turbine part. And we pretty much double what that is in order to get the the rings underneath that, the ones that connect down onto the the ground station. Oh, I'm a wee bit upside down here. Right there we go. So yeah, the tensile rotary power transmission, the transmission set that goes down there. Um, so let's go and capture those. I'll stop this part here. <coughs> 